God be the glory. God be the glory. Listen, I, I told y'all last week, if you get a chance to praise him, you better go ahead and do it. If I was y'all, I'd be running off, running off the wall. But tomorrow morning, you're going to be on the man's time, and you ain't going to be able to praise him like you can right here. <laughs> you might get fired jumping off the wall. You're looking for a job. Hallelujah, I'm in the parking lot. Get your stuff. Amen. <laughs> live in a house, a multi-religion, watch this, multi-religion house, oh, that's right, multi-religion house, and you start praising Jesus Christ, you might have an Islam, a problem with folk in your house or something, am I right about it? I mean, some of us are fortunate that we live in Christian households, but others live in multi-religious households. And there's other religions in the room next to you, snoring. <laughs> in Arabic. <laughs> so we need to be thankful. So if you have your Bibles, can you meet in the book of John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11? John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. King James Version. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 8, 1 through 11, King James Version. John 8, 1 through 11, King James. Amen. John 8, 1 through 11. Please stand for the reading of the word if you can. If your feet hurt, sit down. We don't want you crying while we pray, while we read. Amen. Amen. And then on your way home, get some shoes that fit. <laughs> I love you. So here we go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith you? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood down with his finger, wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin. No more. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this woman. We thank you for this passage. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We praise you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would bless this presentation. We pray that someone would be encouraged today by this pericope, by this passage of Scripture. We pray right now, Lord, there's someone in our midst right now that needs to hear this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. 
may be seated. I'm going to need a spare mic just in case this one's uh, breaking up. just want to make sure. I got the other one, this other one, in case. This, this is my next one. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to use as a theme, don't be so quick to condemn. Don't be so quick to condemn. As we go through this Christian walk, oftentimes we find other people struggling in areas where we ourselves have got it going on. We find people wrestling with issues that we know for a fact that we ourselves have been delivered from. Amen. I rang somebody's bell right there. I know I did. I know I got some ex-cigarette smokers in here. I got some current cigarette smokers in here. I know I got some ex-people that drank in here. And I got some current people that drink in here. I, got, I know I got some ex-weed heads in here. And I got some current weed heads in here. Come on now. I got some ex-fornicators in here. And I got some current fornicators in here. Come on, somebody. Don't, 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 don't get your halo going. I'll ring your bell. I'll call your name out. Hey, with me here, don't, 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 don't look all sanctimonious to me because you make me think you ain't got nothing going on. But we all know that everybody has something going on. Now, you may have been delivered. And you may have a little bit of a, a peace in your heart because you don't cut down, you down to one joint a day now. But uh, but come on now, you know, you drop the joint, picked up the tangerine. Come on, somebody. So don't don't get don't don't get the sanctimonious on me here. It's easy to get puffed up when you don't when you know that you no longer struggle with a particular sin. Amen. It's easy. Let me tell you something. It's easy. It's e you ever notice when people lose weight? They start telling you how, how, how you eating too much. <laughs> yeah, you ever notice that? You ever notice that? Now you done lost. Come on now. Come on now. It took you 42 years to lose 4.2 pounds. And now you want to tell me how I should die. Come on, somebody. You like that? That's so Come on, somebody. But they walk in your house or you get in the car with them and you say, that car smells like cigarettes. Yeah, the cigarettes you left in here 10 years ago when you were smoking. <laughs> Am I right about it? Yeah. We got to be careful how we look at folk who are struggling with, and I'm spelling this stuff, S-H-T-U-F-F, stuff. But we all have it. As a matter of fact, if we could be honest today, we would have to say that at one time or another, even we have been guilty of pointing the finger to a brother or sister. Amen. Say amen. Lisa, thank you. Amen. At one time or another, we say, now, 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 he need to cut that out. Come on, somebody. That's the same thing you were struggling with, wasn't it? But you say it now. You're on the deacon board now. now yeah, yeah, you, smell, you don't smell like you used to smell. And you, you got your teeth repaired. And come on, somebody. Your breath don't stink like it used to. So now you don't understand why. You got a dental plan, so now you, you're paradigmically uh, sound. And you got your teeth cleaned. And your gums pulled back. Somebody ain't You want to know why her breath stinks? Because she don't have a dental plan. Amen. Somebody say, he getting too real for me. <laughs> Been too real. <laughs> my personal observation, and I've been doing this for a couple minutes now, my personal observation is that some people are hardest on the very sins of others that they themselves once struggled with. Look at her. She a little hussy. She done, she done been up and down and all around. And yet you got seven churn to prove that you've been up and down and all around. Come on, somebody. And all of them, come on now. Y'all know what I'm getting. Don't make me go there now. So, so we don't want to look too harsh on people who are struggling. Amen. 
laughing. You ain't but a phone call away from a booty call. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take the halos off. Take the halos off. Let me, let, me let me tell you something. Let me, tell you, let, me, let, me, let me make this real for you. Let me make this real for you. Here's, here's what's real. The only reason why you haven't fallen is because the right person didn't call you at the right time in the right place. Amen. Amen. Remember I tell you my wife beats me? Amen. So now all you got to do is catch me after a good butt whooping that I got from home on a, y'all ain't praying with me, out of town, in Dallas, in, uh, not Dallas, okay, in Virginia. <laughs> Watch it. Well, she said, she, she, Dallas is her. That's, that's where she, that's the place she's talking about. See, see, see? The right place for her is Dallas. No, 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 not Dallas. No, I said, so, so now, okay, so I go to Petersburg, Virginia, and, and, and nobody knows me there. Right? And um, it's midnight. And I'm in the right place at the right time. And the right person ring the right bell. Y'all been praying with me. And I just got whooped. Right. So don't get it. Don't get all puffed up because you ain't yet. And don't forget, you're a little grayer than you used to be. Don't forget, you got a half row now instead of an half row. Don't forget, man. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. You ain't like it. Come on, man. And, 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 and you got a permanent hangover. A permanent hangover. That's when you that's when you can't see your belt buckle. Y'all ain't praying with me. So 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 your temptation is not as good as it used to be when you were 25. Am I right about it? So stay with me now, stay with me now. Now you can't understand why a 25-year-old is so promiscuous. You know why? Because her bell is ringing constantly. His bell, his phone is constantly ringing. You with me here? So he or they have more temptation than you do. But you used to have those kinds of temptations and you used to succumb to them. But now you just can't fathom. I just can't understand why he got so many women. Well, you had a black book, Negro. Am I right about it? We got to be careful not to condemn. There are a few things that, uh, what I said, there are a few things that are worse than judgmental Christians. Very few things. We should remain in a posture of, but for God's grace. Amen. See, see, whenever you see somebody struggling with something, you need to say, but for God's grace, there go I. Amen. Am I right about it? The only reason why you ain't out there with me is because of God's grace. Now, I didn't come here to make you mad, sad, or glad. I just stopped by here to make you, make, make you aware that we must be careful as it pertains to the sins of others. Amen. We shouldn't be so quick to condemn. Amen. In this passage of scripture, I see four things. I see the rising, I see the repulsive, I see the reprisal, and I see the reprieve. I'll say it again. I see the rising, I see the repulsive, I see the reprisal, and I see the reprieve. In verses one and two, we'll see the rising. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives Early in the morning, I said he rose. Well, I said, and he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Jesus was a teacher. He was a teacher. And, and listen to this. I, I heard, I learned uh, uh, back in school a few years back. They said, teaching and preaching. Watch this, watch this, Tammy. When either one of them are being done very well, it's hard to tell the difference. Amen. If you preaching good, you teaching good. Amen. 
if you teaching good, you just might be preaching. You with me here? And if you're doing either one of them well, it's difficult for people to differentiate the two. Amen. Jesus went up early in the morning, came down to the people to the temple, and he taught them. He sat down and taught the people. I found out that the best. I remember side. Y'all remember Sims, the clothing store in New Jersey? Sims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a slogan, and they said, "An educated consumer is our best customer." Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm gonna put that around. Uh, an educated, a, a biblically educated saint is our best member. Right. Amen. Because if you're biblically educated and you understand the scripture, you ain't going to fall for a whole bunch of other stuff that a lot of other people fall for. Because right. you got something in you that says, no, that, that just ain't right. For example, for example, I ain't never seen, tell a girl I've known you for 27 years, I ain't seen you in an argument in this church yet. Linda Hill, I've known you for the same amount of time. i never seen you fuss with one person in this church. I ain't never seen you in an argument in this church. Linda Lillian Green, same thing. Know her 20 some years. Never seen her in an argument or misunderstanding of no way, shape, or form. You know why? Because she's an educated Christian in terms of the scripture. I ain't talking about ABCs. I ain't talking about college. I ain't talking about none of that. I'm talking about knowing what God says for your life. Amen. And if you understand what God said for your life, you won't be, 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 you won't be able to do the matrix thing. You know, if something come at you, you know how to, you know how to get out of it because, because you don't get caught in the, in the daily snares of under, uh, under mature Christians. You don't get, you don't get caught up in, in dumb stuff. You follow me? So an educated Christian is our best man. We don't have a problem. We don't have no fusses with, 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 with the mature joints because they like, hey, look, man, I know what that is. That thing that's going on right over there, that ain't nothing but the enemy. Amen. <laughs> but, but the immature, they like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because oh, they don't understand the scripture. So my goal today is to teach. And I want you to understand that in here, not only do I see the rising, but I see the repulsive. Here's what's repulsive. In verse 3, it says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. As a matter of fact, in the very act. That's some peeping through the window. That's some. That's some I was under the bed. That's, that's some, that's some, that's some peeping time. That's, that's some voyeurism stuff when you're talking about she was caught. I think she was set up. I think they sent in, uh, <laughs> I think they sent in the right person at the right place at the right time. Are you with me here? And she went for it. But they was in there Snapchatting. They was in there, you know, taking pictures or whatever they needed in those days. I don't know what they did. I guess they drew it. I guess they, I guess they had a pencil paper. We got her in the very act. Then they lied. Or they misunderstood the scripture. Here's where they lied. Now Moses in the law commanded uh, that such should be stoned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wrong. Moses didn't say that. And I'll tell you what Moses said. Moses said if she was betrothed to get back. And she cheated on her husband, that she should be stoned. Moses also said, they left this part out, that if a man and a woman be caught in adultery, yes. that they both should be stoned. Amen. They didn't bring him, but they had the woman. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all, y'all ain't praying with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, see. Remember, remember the thing about Mary when Mary was betrothed to date to, to Joseph and Mary got pregnant with child. Well, she could have been stoned according to the law. But an adulterer was not to be stoned. But here's what was supposed to happen. I'll tell you what was supposed to happen is if she was caught in a situation whereby she should be stoned. Let me tell you what happened. 
the person who is her accuser, what guys would do, they would catch their wives cheating, they would bring their wives before the priest, and if the wife, if it was established that she was cheating, then she could be, she could possibly be stoned. Watch this. But in the case of that, what would happen is they would take the lady up on a built platform that's 10 to 12 feet tall. The accuser, the husband, would be responsible for pushing her off of the thing. Now, if she survived that fall, then the husband was to take a boulder type stone and try to drop it over into her chest. That's what was supposed to happen in those days. That's Old Testament stuff. Are you with me here? That's Old Testament stuff. But I just need you to know that because you need to know what the times were at this time. So when you brought this lady here to accuse her of adultery, Jesus flipped the script on him as we're going to read. We're going to read a little further how Jesus flipped the script on him. So here we go. So what was repulsive is that they set the girl up and put her in this situation or whatever. They didn't bring the man who she was committing adultery with. Verse 6, they said, tempting Jesus, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood down and wrote something on the ground as though he heard them not. Now, this, this case, here's what I'd like y'all to see. I'd like y'all to see, turn your name and say, Jesus ignored them. Hey. <laughs> and you see, it says right here, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. <laughs> you see it right there? Yeah. This is verse 4 6. It says as though he heard them not. Now, I want you to know that sometimes you've got to ignore a person. I almost slipped up there. Yeah, son of a gun. Sometimes you got to ignore some stuff, but sometimes if you respond to a fool, he'll think he said something. One of the ways you respond to a fool is not. When you say, well, I'll put it like this. When, so, when a fool say something, don't say nothing. Just let that, let that marinate up. Leave that out there in the air. It'll come back around and hit him in the head. Just that, when a fool say something real, real dumb and stupid, just, just get silent. Don't, don't say nothing. <laughs> and that stupidity that just came out of his or her mouth will go around the room, hit all four walls, and back into their ear and they'll hear what they said. But if you start speaking after a fool says something, they ain't going to hear what they said. And sometimes the best response to a fool is what Jesus did. Jesus acted as though he heard them not. I like that. Go, Jesus. Now when you see the repulsive, let's take a look at the reprisal. In verse 6, so, watch says, When they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now watch this. Listen up. Listen up real good. Remember I told you that the person would have to push him off and then cast a stone. So one of the reasons why they did that is that if you really, truly, honestly, without a doubt, believe that you that this person really did this, then you ain't got no problem with, with, with the push or the stone. So it kind of gives you that double conviction like, okay, my wife did commit adultery, but I ain't... I, I, don't, I don't want to kill her. You with me here? So it gives her a second chance. Or even if you divorce her, at least you don't kill her. But whoever accuses her is responsible for casting the first stone. And Jesus flipped the script, the reprisal. He says, and again he stooped down and started writing on the ground. Now, guess what I think? It says here, and they which heard it being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one, being the eldest even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. Guess what I think? What y'all think he was writing on the ground? Y'all ain't praying with me. I think he was writing some names down. I think he was, I think he was down there. That's what I think. I think Jesus was like, I think Jesus was writing on the ground. He like this. Deacon King. <laughs> Deacon Goodman, M O N D. Are you with me here? I believe Brother Short, S H O R T. 
I think he was writing names down, and I think them boys, this is just me, this is Larry, the Bible don't say it, but I think them boys were like, surely this thing is known. T-U-C-K-E-O? I think them boys started getting convicted because Jesus knew all things. He knew the one, he knew the one, he knew the one, and see, that's the thing too. Before we be pointing the finger at folk, trust me, you in the same boat. Did you know? I'm a scary man to death today. I'm getting ready to scare all you men. Y'all might as well get scared because I'm getting ready to scare. Did you know that if you look on a woman and in your heart or mind you consider having sex with that woman, did you know that you have committed fornication or adultery in your heart right then and there? Ah, that's a scary one. That's a scary one. Y'all brothers better cut it out. In other words, no, you did not have physical sex contact with her. But you looked at her and you thought about, oh my God, how it would be to be with her. Guess what you did? You just committed a fornication and adultery. I didn't make that up. That's in the scripture. Yeah. You just committed fornication or adultery in your heart. So now, what you got to do, I'm going to tell you how I do it. I make sure that every woman other than my wife is considered my sister. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. It makes it so much easier. Because it's not like there, there aren't some very attractive women. Are you with me here? And it's not like I'm not a man, but you have to know how to deal with that in a way that would be pleasing to God. And the way I do it, they're all my sisters. Everyone. My husband right there, he know where I'm going. I do that with all of them except for the sunshine over here. Blue skies don't play that. Sunshine, blue skies. Blue skies, he don't play that. Don't be, don't, be, don't, be, don't, be, don't be like, don't be sucking, kissing on my woman there. I do that with everybody in the church to say sunshine. But that's all right. I catch you playing them congos and I give me a kiss on the cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he rough, he rough with it, he rough with it. I'm telling y'all, boy, don't, don't, be, don't even be standing in the same room. Is she in the room? Go the other way, man. It ain't worth it. That boy crazy. Trust me, she's the only one in here. All the rest of them, put your hand on sunshine so we can save some brothers from getting to it. Put your hand on so we didn't know who I'm talking about. It's her right here. That's sunshine. Brothers, don't go nowhere in there. You know there's no man to sit in this section over here. There's a woman's section over That boy will run him off like a pit bull. That's all right, that's all right. You don't know where he been. You don't know what he done went through. <laughs> Somebody might have been in the right place at the wrong time. Hey, Amen. I'm trying to save you, brother, so stay away from me. Okay, so again, he stood the suit down. And I, like I said, I believe he might have been writing their name. And, and, and watch this. And then he said to them, you know, those who, who, who among you uh, who are without sin. And, and guess what I read? When I studied this, listen to this, y'all. You're going to like this. When I studied this, it said those that are without sin among you. Guess what? Guess what they're talking about? The Greek words have to do with the same sin. So those of you that are without the same sin, the same sin, you in here? Let him cast the stone again. And guess what? They all left. <laughs> You with me here? He went out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? You understand? Know the same sin. In other words, these boys was all up in adultery. But yet, they're going to bring this woman, and where's the man? They're going to bring this woman, and where's the man? He's talking about, Moses said we should kill him. And you know what I think? I'm going to throw this up for another Larry Tucker. This is what I think. I think some of them might have had something to do with it. And that's why they're trying to get her off the planet. Why are all y'all so concerned about this one person? You know what I mean? She might have been a little loose or something like that. And, 
You know, they had that few of them, as my mother used to say, had their way with her. My mother, oh, oh no, no, my mother had another one. Had something to do with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another one, that's another one. That's some old school stuff here. So you gotta be over 50 to get that. If you ain't over 50, you don't even know what I'm talking about. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one. Now, here's what I like. Look at this, King. King, look. Beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And then Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the middle. Notice, old dude was like, um. <laughs> You know what I mean? Is it from the elder, the, the old guy's smart enough. Look, man, we ain't gonna win this thing here. This boy here is smart. I think he know what I've been doing. Let me get out of here. And the oldest guy just said again at the oldest, even until the last. So the younger guys finally got it when they realized that it was only them standing there. They said, I think we better leave with them old heads. But you see, sometimes wisdom, you know, uh, age, age can can give you wisdom. Not only did you see reprisal, but let's take a look at the reprieve. Y'all know what a reprieve is, right? I don't have to explain that. That's when you get another chance, second chance. So watch this. In verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw that none but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are them? What happened to them? Where do you go then? Where are them? What happened? And he says, she said, what happened to all those accusers? It says, Jesus lifted up his head and saw them as woman. Woman, where are those that are accusers? Have no man condemned thee? And she said, verse 11, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. I believe that the woman was probably a promiscuous woman. All right, she had her flaws, just like you do, and just like I do, and she got caught up in something, and that's another thing, say, look, look, just because you didn't get caught, don't mean God is saying it's all right. He just trying to give you some grace and mercy, hope you find yourself before you wreck yourself. Just because you ain't got caught yet, just because you ain't on the news, just because they ain't pulled you up on channel six, don't mean that God is saying it's okay for you to do that thing. He's just trying to save you and possibly save his reputation. Because when one of you get messed up, jacked up, you know you're messing with his reputation. I thought he was a Christian. I thought she was in the church. I thought she was on the choir. I thought he was a deacon. Ain't he a pastor? Don't he go down there to that church? You with me here? Just because you didn't get caught up doesn't mean God is saying it's okay. And I also, I also I always say this too. I always say this. Usually, 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 when a person gets caught up and the thing becomes known, usually they done had 15 chances at getting out of that. And God just got tired of them and said, look here, she ain't gonna stop, he ain't gonna stop. And then the next thing you know, bam, you on CNN. That's because you failed to take the 15 warnings that he. I've never been exposed on anything the first time. Everything I ever got exposed on was something that I had repeatedly done. That of you. That's right. That's right. I've never, I've never did something the first time and bam, I'm all over. Swear that. No, 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 no. If I get caught, if it shows up, it's because my God, my merciful God, my wonderful, gracious Mercy, mercy God gave me five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times. And then he says, look, this boy ain't going to learn. I'm just going to have to expose him. And the next thing you know, caught on tape. It's only a couple people in the Bible that God heard the first time. And um, I don't even think that was their first time, just the first time we heard about it. And that was Ananias and Sapphira. Y'all remember that? Lying about the money? Remember at the offer table? And God struck them dead. Guess what I think, Terry? I think they've been lying. God don't kill nobody the first time. I think they've been lying. And God just got tired of it. I told y'all to stop lying. Now you done went into church. 
lied to the bishop, told the bishop that you sold the house for, for $5,000 when you know you sold it for fifty. You come up here laying $5,000 on an offering table like you turned all the money in and you did. You're dead. You've been lying about them camels. You, told, you stole three donkeys and lied about that. Am I right about it? Two turtle doves are missing. You ain't seen nothing. I'm tired of you lying, bam. And then his wife goes along with it. She gets it. She gets it too. In closing, I'd like to say that many people are very zealous when it comes to other people's sin. Amen. However, we must not be so eager to judge others without first taking a look at the plank that is in our own eye. Amen. Will you get that from Pastor? Matthew 7 3. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank that's in your own eye? So my brothers and sisters, in closing, real simple. Please, don't be so quick to condemn. Amen.